do our best to draw from every meeting. You know, I had reached out concerning how, what does pressing in look like? You know, we hear that a lot, especially uh, in a ministry where it has been, has been graced with the prophetic pressing in, you know, but, but how do I posture myself for that? And, uh, you know, when we were in the world, there were many things that we could look forward to, hanging out with that people group, hollering at that shawty that you was looking after. Come on, somebody. I, I know. I may be speaking for myself. You see what I'm saying? And you could imagine the things that you wanted to do, how you wanted to go about handling yourself in those situations. You see, it's the same way. The same imagination that you have that you utilize in the world to carry out all of that devilment it's the same imagination that you use in the presence of God. You see yourself before the throne. And, and I'm here to tell you because the world has done such a job with Barney in the world of make-believe that somehow the good thoughts ain't as true as the thoughts that we have in the world, okay? They don't hold this much weight. It's just an imagination. No, the image machine is what the Lord has given you. And so you begin to see yourself in worship before the feet of the Lord, before his throne, ministering and consulting with the angelic because the scriptures say you've come to the company of innumerable angels. See them by your side, engaging them. And as the man of God is ministering, painting pictures, begin to tap into those pictures. See yourself in those visions as he describes because the Lord has sent us the prophet. And before you know it, you'll be seeing stuff and then you'll hear it in the ministry or you'll hear it in the conversation. Oh, I just saw that that wasn't just your imagination you see what I'm saying and so I want us to be encouraged tonight let us prepare to receive the man of God let's build him up yet again oh God we thank you for the ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the churches Father, for your word declares to receive your prophets and prosper. Father, we thank you for this mighty one that you have sent before us. Lord, we thank you for the message that you have prepared through him to be ministered deep unto deep. All glory and honor belong to you. Let us receive this man of God, Pastor Moses Anderson. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. God is good. Hallelujah. Let us all be seated. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I just want to encourage you guys. Um, uh, there's a lot that goes into um, setting the stage and playing our part in creating the ambience and the atmosphere. And so the worship leaders, the musicians, wherever you see them, whenever you see them, please feel free in your heart to be a blessing to them. You know, if you want to pray for them, pray with them. If you want to take off your shoes and give it to them, just make sure it's their size. You know, if you want to pay for their haircut, because sometimes those haircuts be looking sharp. You know, whatever it is that is laid on your heart, let us all be a part of making this thing happen together. God is doing great things here. And it is awesome, awesome. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It feels really awesome to have a male voice in the band. Isn't that awesome? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if y'all have noticed. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe y'all didn't notice because I'm always screaming from here. Yeah, that's not the kind of male voice we're talking about. We're talking about that one. Praise God. God is good. Excited, excited. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Uh, we're going to get started from the beginning today from the very beginning. Uh, not the beginning, but the beginning. It says in the beginning. Now, we're just going to go straight to verse 3 very quickly uh, because of time. Um, and other reasons, the Bible says, God said, then God said, let there be light. I want us to really read it again. I'm reading from the New King James Bible, and I believe it is the same in many of our Bibles. Um, as soon as I saw Mary Ann come in, is that Mary Ann? Is it? Oh, yeah, I can't really tell because she looks very different today. She looks like she, yeah. We praise God for her. Say that again. Oh, you're not coming back. Don't worry. Every time you leave here, you're a new person. So, because the you that came today is going to be a new creation by the time you're going. So that is, that is prophetic. Hallelujah. I'll take that on your behalf. 
As soon as I saw her, I remember another one of our friends who is actually a part of Communion House who's never been to Communion House. And what I mean by that is she watches online. They live, um, uh, where do they live now? They live in Ohio. Is it Ohio or Idaho? Idaho. Mary Ann. Mary Ann of Captain Max. You would know. It's, I think it's Idaho. Idaho uh, and it's Idaho, right? Idaho and Ohio, they sound alike but very different states. Oh, yeah. So in case you're watching from one of those, don't be offended. I know you're very different. Oh, yeah. And uh, she's been a part of the ministry, supporting the ministry as best as she's able to. And also, you know, dialing in, listening to the teachings and all whatnot. And you know what is interesting is she reached out to me with a testimony this last week. As we've seen testimonies come in, she's not even in the group. I think we need to add her to the WhatsApp group. But about the time that others were chiming in with testimonies of what God is doing, she also had an amazing testimony of the fulfillment of prophecy in her life that unfolded just the way it was prophesied. And so I just want to encourage you that even from afar, we are receiving good news. The Bible says it is such a good thing to receive good news from a far country. It is like cold water to a thirsty soul. And so when you hear that somebody who's actually never been physically in this atmosphere of miracles, of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, of fellowship with the host of heaven, even though she's not been here, the word that is going forth is still performing in her life. Breakthroughs, elevations, exhortations, and deliverances. And so to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Now, Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says then. If your Bible begins with then, can I see your hand? Alrighty. If it begins with then, somebody we may need to raise an offering to buy Laura a new Bible. What is the start of your Genesis 1 3, Laura? Oh, you were distracted. Okay, well, for your honesty, God bless you. Um, so the Bible says, then God said, let there be light. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that today, that which you reveal to us of yourself will energize us and inspire us and also promote us to do as you do. Father, let us not just see what you're revealing to us of yourself as the God kind of stuff, like that's what God does. But let us see those things that you are revealing to us of yourself and the Godhead as what we also need to do, having been made in the image and in your likeness. Let us see that which you revealed to us of your attributes as things that we also need to aspire to see in our lives in the form of fruitfulness. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as you reveal yourself to us through the instrumentation of your word, Jesus said to Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. As we see your word and as we see into your word and see through your word today. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let us aspire to become what we behold. Let us aspire to become what we behold. For that is your will for us in Christ Jesus. That his express image may be fully formed in us. And that we may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. In the mighty name of of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I am excited. I told my wife, I said, we need to have that prayer session online as quickly as possible because I want to just watch it again. Not just to be, not just to enjoy the moment again, but to actually relive that experience again. The power of God was very present, is very present amongst us, very tangible during worship, extremely tangible during that prayer. And I was saying to myself the entire time, where else would I rather be than to be in God's presence? You know, when Alan came up and was talking about the wind that he felt of the Holy Ghost, of, of the angels, I was like, yeah, 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 I felt that wind too. In fact, it was one of the, when I opened my eye at some point, I'm like, uh, am I going to see something? Because I felt it so strong. Yeah. yeah, I'm not as spiritual as Antoine. I actually opened my eyes. You know, some people feel the wind and that's when they dial in more. I felt the wind, I opened one eye, I'm like, 
what's going on here? And I didn't see anything. I'm like, okay, it must be something spiritual. You understand what I mean? And so we thank God. And um, I believe I'm sounding great, Bennett. Thank you. I see you waiting for that, but it sounds great. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So um, can somebody get with Joshua, make sure that we are okay in that upper box? I just have the leading this time around to do a second check. Um, because once beaten, twice shy. We, I think it was two weeks ago, we lost the message. I mean, we lost the recording. We didn't lose the message. Praise God for that, which already made it into our hearts. Um, so praise God. So I said today, as I was praying, that we will not just behold that which the Lord is revealing to us of himself as one of those things that, yeah, it's just, is God. We will begin to aspire to become what we behold of him. We will continue, uh, let me say this, um, because you know when I say continue, it is not because we have started, okay? The Holy Spirit cautioned me because he knew why I was saying it, but I also know he cautioned me on how it may be coming across. I said we will continue to be more like him, continue to become what we behold, and it is not what you have started. You know, you can only continue something that has begun, something that has started. And so I want to make it very clear that this is a prophetic word, that this is a word coming from the mouth of our Heavenly Father, your Father and my Father, to you today that we will continue not from where we started, but from where He started. Because sometimes when we hear a word that says, oh, we will continue to be more like him, our focus immediately goes to the things that we have already started doing and immediately we fail because some of us have not started right. Because some of us have not been consistent. When I say that we will be like him and my wife just reminded us that he prays all night, you may be thinking to yourself, I haven't even been praying all of 10 minutes. And so all of what God wants to do then gets obstructed by you thinking you have to make it happen. Many births have been aborted simply because we get in the way of the midwives of heaven thinking we have to birth the babies that have been inseminated within us by the word of God. That is the true gospel of grace and truth. The word of the Lord did not say that God is committed to perfecting that which you start. The Bible says he is faithful and just to complete that which he has begun. I will be like Jesus. You will be like him. Not because of the little efforts that we have made or not made, but because of the fact that he started us up in glory in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that unless Jesus himself speaking, a grain of wheat, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Father, why don't we just together say thank you Lord for the unction. You see, because the Bible says that the holy men of old spoke as the Holy Spirit gave them unction. The unction of the Holy Spirit is here to enlighten, to reprove, and to get you thoroughly furnished unto every good work. The Lord is here today through the ministry of his oracle by his Holy Spirit to allow for the letter to become life to you so that that which is dead once again will live and live victorious and live glorious. So let your heart open up by faith to receive the injunction of the Almighty God. You see, because the thing that the Lord is allowing for us to come into today is the reality of the potency of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He that has begun a good work in you is announcing over you today that it will continue the way that he has started it because Jesus said unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone and when he said that he said that concerning himself that he would have to die and then be raised the firstborn from the dead firstborn amongst many brethren and that he will then have other people see other people being raised unto God as children that are called 
heirs of salvation together with Christ Jesus. Isn't that amazing that that was the beginning that you and I have? We have a beginning that is already settled in heaven. We have a beginning that is guaranteed by the blood that is eternal. And so it doesn't matter how many times I have stumbled and how many detours I have made. It doesn't matter the word of the Lord says to me today and to you that you will continue to go from glory to glory until Christ is formed in you, the hope of glory. That is the gospel. And that is the hope that we have that makes not ashamed that he is committed to completing what he has been begun. Aren't you thankful that you did not begin the entire journey? Aren't you thankful that you were not sitting somewhere on the edge of eternity getting bored and saying, oh, I need to go to earth and have a human experience. Yeah, yeah just imagine. Yeah, because if that was you who started all of this, you would have given up a long time ago. And you and I have given up so many times. But then the one who said that you are my planting that I may be glorified never gives up. The Bible says he never sleeps, he never slumbers. He is love and love never fails. That which he has begun, he is watching over every word that he has spoken over you to perform it. Will you let him? Amen. Praise God for those yeses. Will you let him? When I was in college, I remember the fellowship that I was a part of. Christ Love Fellowship, CLF, we were so proud. We were almost more proud of being part of the fellowship than we were a part of Jesus. You know? Yeah, my wife says that. My wife says that a lot of CLF people that she sees online, they're still so very proud of being CLFites, as we used to call ourselves. We were so full of it. We were so full of, of ourselves. Literally, we were so proud. But I tell you what, it wasn't just because we were a group of, you know, happy-go-lucky people. We were so proud of being that in that fellowship because of the fact that we saw other kids in the world who were proud of their clubs and all of their sororities that they, were, that they belonged to, so much so that they would make t-shirts and have parties just to celebrate their alliances. And so we were like, wait a minute, these gatherings are about their father's wealth or it's about the ambition that they have. These ones have a sorority or a cult or a club, sorry, because they want to become lawyers and future. These ones want to become whatever. And we know that we are ultimately going to become like Jesus. And so we decided to wear it with pride. Oh, we were so proud of being in Christ Love Fellowship. And one of the things that one of our slogans at the time is this, and it kept me going for years. And you know what it was? Let him love you. Every time we had fellowship on Thursdays and on Tuesdays, the banner was always big and bold and it says, let him love you. You see, because the reality of it is that God is so faithful and so faithfully committed to being God that he will never stop loving you. But there are times when we just don't let him because we don't think we're worthy. We just don't let him because we believe that we need to go through stuff because we just believe that certain things have to be legal. And the Lord is saying, it don't matter to me. I just want to love you. Will you let me? I want to grow you. Will you let me? I want to raise you. Will you let me? I want to break you and make you again. Will you let me? Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Okay. I'm going to touch on it quickly and we're going to go to Romans chapter 12 verse 4 through 7. What I want to touch on here very quickly, the Lord says it's just a bonus, not really part of what he sent me here to do primarily to say today or to do here, but I'm, I'm taking the bonus. Thank you, Jesus. So the Bible says, then God said, okay, it says move quickly because you need to keep going. Okay. He says, then God says, what is the significance of the then? The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth somehow was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. Now, the Bible also lets us know that whatsoever the Lord does is a thing of beauty and it stands forever. So how come the earth that the Lord created was now without form and void? It was quite the unexpected outcome. 
Many of us, whenever we are faced with the unexpected, we become paralyzed because we are just so shocked. But the Bible says, then God said, let there be. And the Lord is saying to you today, what are you saying about the situation that you are observing? Are you declaring what you want to see or are you describing what you see? Don't get stuck and don't stay where you're at in shock. The Bible says every time the disciples of Jesus were shocked at what they saw, Jesus would rebuke them and say oh you of little faith why do you continue to marvel they would be so shocked and be surprised and be describing their fears and the situation but the Lord God himself when he saw that which was unexpected he said what he wanted to see then God said so when somebody promises you to give you a contract and they fail to deliver then you should say what you want to see as opposed to describing their inconsistency, as opposed to expressing your disappointment. God did not say, oh, look at this darkness. Oh, it's so annoying. This is usually not me. Many of us are so occupied with excusing the situation because some of us will be like, you know that this is not what I do. I promise you. God could have said, I promise you, this wasn't the way that I, I mean, I'm God. I mean, come on, I am light. I don't know, but we'll fix it. But he didn't do any of that. He wasn't trying to say, oh, I promise you, this, this, is, this is totally not consistent with who I am. But God looked at what he was seeing and he was like, okay, let there be light. Sometimes you wake up and for some reason you're just sad. There might be a chemical imbalance in your body from something that you ate. You may have heard whispers from the kingdom of darkness all through the night. But the moment you are awake, you're not supposed to continue along that trajectory. Neither are you supposed to be whining and complaining to God and say, God, why wouldn't you just let me wake up as happy as Moses? I've seen his story already. He's just so happy. You know, because sometimes you wake up and you just grab on your phone and someone is already happy showing you their coffee on the way to walk and they're like, oh, rise and shine. And you're like, get out of here. Not everybody's happy like you. But why can't you be happier than them? Because happiness is yours. The Bible says the thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus says, but I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Drop the complaint and pick up the praise. Drop the worry and pick up yourself and lift up your hands and say, Lord, you are the glory and the lifter of my head. Then God said. David was silent when things were crumbling around him and realized after a while that the silence wasn't helping. So one day he woke up and was like, let us do an assessment. Alan just reminded us. He says, every time you wake up, your flesh is awake too. And your flesh is contesting to be in the driver's seat because your flesh knows that the moment your spirit engages the kingdom of heaven, the righteousness, the peace, and the joy, you will be heading toward life and your flesh don't want none of that. Your flesh wants to end in the darkest dungeons. And so your flesh wants to be the one driving. And so what do you do? You put your flesh in its place. Like Paul said, I put my body under. And the flesh is like, oh, don't do that. That's going to kill me. You will say to your flesh, that is exactly what I want because you are supposed to die daily. So when you wake up and your flesh wants to continue in sorrow, tell your flesh that there is a scripture that says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4, rejoice in case you didn't hear it the first time. The Bible says again, I say rejoice. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. When I'm in the spirit, it is the Lord's day. So when I wake up and I'm not feeling good, I will remember then God said, let there be light. David woke up one day and he was feeling sad. And you know what he says? He says, oh, uh, when I was silent, this, it wasn't helping me. He says, my bones be, were getting weak within me. He said, in silence, my bones grew weak within me. He said, but now I believe, therefore I will speak. And what did he say? He says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad 
in it. You have to be the number one party organizer in your own life. Throwing yourself a happy party all the time. Let me tell you something, you were designed to throw a party anyway. That's the reason why you throw a pity party when you're not throwing a joyful party. Romans chapter 12, verse 4. You see, the thing is, Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. Somebody says, but Lazarus was raised. Lazarus was not raised from the dead. Lazarus was awoken from sleep. Jesus didn't tell you that he was going to go raise Lazarus from the dead. He says, our brother Lazarus sleeps and we are going to go wake him up. The resurrection from the dead is to be awakened from sin because the wages of sin is death. So Jesus still is the firstborn amongst many brethren. I just thought I'd say that because some people may be thinking he's the secondborn. No, he ain't. The woman of Nain, the widow of Nain or Nahin, her son was also raised from sleep. They were not raised from, dead, from the dead because after they were raised, they were still sinners. They were still dead in sin. It wasn't until Jesus was raised that we became dead to sin. Romans chapter 12. Rabondela. yalaba. The Bible says many who are dead who are asleep in the dust of the earth will rise. Hallelujah. Resurrection is upon us, folks. Hallelujah. And then I'm telling you, some people, some of us will be raised from the dead, even against our wish. <laughs> but I'm telling you that because some of you, you just want to have a little money so you can, uh, you know, go shopping. Enjoy your holiday and in case there's another lockdown, you don't have to worry because you have food under your bed. That's all you care about. You just want to have enough Bitcoin so that in case the dollar crumbles, you can still buy yourself a little computer. You know, some of us, that's what we're just wait, we're, That's what we're just, we're just happy with a little daily bread. You know what I'm saying? Just a little devotion here and there. Nothing crazy. But let me tell you something. There was a man in the Bible who was happy being dead, but they happened to bury him next to the grave of the man of God. And the fact that his dead arm Touch the bone of Elisha. The Bible says he was raised back to life. Imagine the disappointment. Especially if you were somebody who really wanted to stay dead. You know, and then you just find yourself waking up. I say that because of certain things that I have seen of late. You may not have had the interest in healing the sick. But the Bible says that the Lord is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And some of you will catch the healing part of that spirit and walk by people and they start getting healed and you're like, I didn't even ask for that. The Lord is saying, yes, you didn't ask to be born either, but I sent you here. It's not about what you have asked for, it's about what I need. Get ready to do the will of your father, even if that's not what you bargained for. Mm -hmm. I'm an American now, I didn't ask for it. Praise the Lord now. Yeah, I landed in Marietta. I didn't ask for it. But the reality of it is not my will, but yours be done. I've been hurt in church, but I'm still here several times a week because I know that it's not about me, but it is about the one who needs me to be here. I will do the will of him who has sent me while it is day. For the night comes when no man can walk. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 4 through 7. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ. And individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Let me tell you something. It is because you are part of his body. That is the reason why you should expect a resurrection. Because David prophesied concerning the Lord Jesus. He says, I have seen the Lord would not allow my Lord to taste corruption. He would not allow his body to remain in Hades. We are the body of Christ. We will not remain in the hole of the ground. A resurrection is coming. Not only are we going to be awakened in him, but we're going to be alive once again to one another. Alive to serve one another. 
I live to help one another. I live to prophesy one to another. I live to be instrumental in the lives of one another. Because that is what the Bible says that we have been raised unto. And having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. The reason why someone will be jealous of another person's gifts is because they are oblivious of their own gift. The moment you recognize that what you've got is only different, but it doesn't mean it's superior. I have something too. So I'll be happy, happy to celebrate your gift because I am sowing celebration and I will reap a celebration because the more I celebrate you, the more someone is going to celebrate me. It might take seven years from when I celebrated you to me being celebrated, but I know that it don't matter. I'm still going to be celebrated sometime, somehow, according to his will. So let us therefore freely give, for freely have we received. The Bible says, verse 7, or in ministry, let us use it in our ministering, he who teaches in teaching. The Lord is telling us to get ready. He is looking for ready vessels that he can move through, that he can operate through. We will break bread once again today from the book of Jeremiah. And as we break bread today, we have been invited to come sit at a table. When I saw the table, I was like, how do we even, and while I was yet wondering, how do we even get onto this table? Because it looks like this table is designed for giants. Because the step to even get to where the seats are looks so giant and it looks so pure. Like if you stepped on it, you will mess it up. And then the Lord said to me, you don't have to worry about that. I invited you to come to my table. Jeremiah 19:13. Jeremiah 19, 13. Isaiah, Jeremiah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I was at a pastor's meeting, a pastor's conference on, two, on Thursday, or maybe Friday, I think it was Friday, and I wanted to read from Jeremiah, and my Bible decided to die on me because I was reading from my app, and they didn't have an internet connection because we were using a different venue because some people were doing a presentation from a, from a legal firm um, to us pastors, and they chose a venue in the complex that we typically meet at, at Freedom Tabernacle, and there was no internet. So I opened the Bible, and my Bible was trying to connect. And so I had to ask someone to hand me their Bible. And so when they gave me that physical Bible, I was used to just typing J, and they list all the Bibles, all the books that start with J and you can choose from Jeremiah to Joel. And then suddenly I'm like, oh my God, where is Jeremiah? Thank God for the songs, Brother Mason, thank you. Thank God for the songs that I learned from my Sunday school and for the fact that I still get to read a physical Bible. So I'm just saying that if all the Bible you read is online and you no longer know which book comes before what because you can always just select from your screen that like you may need to practice internetlessness, internetlessness, just in case, I'll be it, I prophesy. Jeremiah 19.13, the Bible says that the house and the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled like the place of Tophe because of all the houses on whose roofs they have burned incense to all the hosts of heaven and poured out drink offerings to other gods. The Bible says that all the houses of Israel and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled because of the other people who were burning incense. He says defiled like the place of Tophe because of all the houses on whose roofs they have burned incense to all the hosts of heaven. And also, not just to the hosts of heaven, did they burn incense, they poured out drink offerings. To burn incense literally means to allow your might, your energy, and your zest to be in the worship of another. You see, when you're burning Fat, fat, you're burning energy, your might. 
Be careful what things you are excited about. If you are more eager to go and watch the Falcons and you get more excited about football than you are about coming to the house of the Lord, even when we just say go and have house fellowship at the house of our brother Ron and sister Nicole, you should be excited. It doesn't matter if there are only eight or nine or ten people there. It doesn't matter if it's not likely that your best and favorite meal is there or not. Still get excited because the Lord Jesus will be there. But many of us, the only time we're burning incense is when we see that that soccer team or that football team or, or, or that TV show is on and then you see people's face light up. So the Lord is saying that sometimes it might not even be you that is getting gung-ho about these worldly things. It might just be because other people around you are doing it. The defilement will overflow and you need to be aware of it. There is a lot of incense burning and there's a lot of drink offerings being poured out. What are drink offerings? Jesus says, I pour out my life as a drink offering. The things that you put all of your passion into, your life is not meant to be for the hosts of heaven. It's meant to be for the service of the almighty God, for the things that bring him glory. And the Lord is saying, we need to pull back our passion. We need to pull back our interest from things that are not of God. The host of heaven. Now, let me, let me say this in case you haven't noticed. A lot of the things of entertainment and fashion are named after fallen angels. They are named after who? After the host of heaven. From Nike to what other ones? To Starbucks. Because Starbucks is the other name that is given to Ashtoreth. You see, so when you look at a lot of the things that catch our attention today, they represent one host of heaven or the other. The name of that football club may not be, but when you look at this symbol, the logo or the icon, in most cases, they have something to do with one of the hosts of heaven. It is either they are carrying in the image of, of, of Taurus, or some kind of constellation. But because of the fact that we have been, what's the word? Kept ignorant for so long, many of us are oblivious to it. But thank God now, we are waking up. That is the reason why it's called resurrection. Jesus says, I have not come to you if you don't think you need me. He says, anyone who is well does not need a physician. He says, but I am come for the ones who know that they are lost. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. If any man be in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. It is okay for us to have been blinded. It is okay for us to have been ignorant. It is okay for us to have been led as sheep to the slaughter. But the beauty of it is now we have heard the voice of the good shepherd and we are coming to life once again. But now it is not okay for us to now go back to sleep. Someone says, oh, maybe you shouldn't have told me, Brother Moses, I'm quite happy enjoying my lack of knowledge of these things. But the Bible says we perish if we do not know. So you are welcome. Ignorance is only bliss. If you choose an eternity of contempt. But if you choose eternal life, that is a life of glory. Then ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is something that you begin to detest with a passion because it's very destructive. The Bible says he knows who quests to know. Will you be like the Berean Christians who are not just happy, happy with a happy meal or a little nugget? These people desire the meat, even the strong meat of the word. As we break bread today, I want you to say, my life is only being poured out to the Lord. I offer my body unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. So now let me explain to you how that is going to work for us and how that works for us. When my wife was up here praying, she said, 
that we are supposed to, I think Alan mentioned it also, not just look at Jesus and say, well, Jesus prayed all night, well, good for him. We need to pray like Jesus prayed. You see, because he said, as I am, so shall you be. So we have been reminded of that, right? And so when Jesus said, this bread is my body and this wine is my blood. Hmm. He was handing to us a magnificent secret of how to see transformation in our bodies. While my wife was praying, she prayed for us to be healed of sicknesses and also to be free from sin that has a stronghold on us. Isn't it interesting that sicknesses mostly afflict our bodies and sin also take toll on the same? And so if Jesus already shows to us that that body of his could be symbolized by the bread and that his life could be that wine. Whenever you take the body of Jesus and his blood, you are tapping into the grace to see your physical being transformed. Because the Bible says that when he was crucified, we were crucified with him. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live is the glorified life of the Son of God. The reason why many of us are not able to feel the liberty of the Spirit is because of the weight of the flesh. And Jesus is saying, you can have my body. You can tap into that body. You can take up your cross and crucify that body that keeps weighing you down. You know, sometimes you come into the presence of God and you feel light bodied. You feel like, yes, I'm in the spirit. I am praying. I am shumba shumba. I don't even feel my feet touch the ground. And then you get home and somebody sends you a text message that wakes up your flesh. And suddenly you start feeling heavy again. You can't even pray. All that inconsistency is not the will of God for you. The will of God for you is to be able to tap into that holy exchange of not living your own life that could be affected by the sins of the world, but to live the life of Jesus that is already glorified. You see, if we are not living the life of Christ, the sin of the nations, the sin of the unbelievers, the incense that they are burning to bear can affect you and I. We can be defiled like the people of Tophe, even though we have not committed any sin. I am just here in my house minding my business. I didn't cause inflation. You understand what I mean? I didn't release any virus. I didn't pollute the atmosphere. Why can't I just go out on a good day and take a selfie now and the cloud is hazy? That is not my problem. But because of the sins of others, we can be defiled. And so now that you recognize that you can be defiled, what do you do? Jump out of that nature that is prone to defilement and then enjoy the glorified life of the Son of Man who loved you and gave himself for you. Paul says, I live the glorified life of the Son of Man, a life that cannot be defiled. So we're breaking bread today, as you can see, early because it is the core of why we're sitting here today to take advantage of the supernatural privilege that has been made available to us to receive the body of Jesus and his blood so that we can begin to live his life. Because when he poured out that blood, he gave us an opportunity to live his life. So I want you to tap into that today. Alan took his time to explain to us what it means to press in. He gave the example of one of the tools that we use in pressing in, which is the power of our imagination. Visualize yourself 
receiving the glorified life of Christ. See it like the prodigal son. The Bible says when the prodigal returned, the father took a robe of privilege and put it on him. See yourself being robed in the righteousness of Christ. See yourself being robed in the faithfulness of Christ. See yourself being robed in the obedience of Christ so that when you stand going forward before your heavenly father, you stand in the righteousness righteousness of Christ Jesus and that is a righteousness that cannot be defiled the Lord is inviting you today to come to that table and you cannot step on that platform with your little legs so unless you have chosen to receive the life of Christ and walk in his body you cannot even climb to the podium where these saints are seated he is inviting you to come and walk in the company of innumerable angels, even the, even the floor is purity and you do not have it unless you receive the one that he is handing out freely. If I were you today, I would say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life and I receive your glorified life so that I can sit at the table of glory, of privilege and of royalty because I am a king and a priest unto my God. I will not be condemned. I will not be put to shame because I've been glorified in Christ Jesus. I want you to just take a moment and begin to describe by prayers to yourself before your heavenly father what it means to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Begin to describe to yourself what you see to be that purity, what you see, to what it means to you to sit at the table with him. Let him know that you are ready to advance in righteousness and in glory. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And lastly, we're going to address what is troubling the world. You see, the Bible says that they are defiled like what? Like the place of tofe or tope. And you know what that word means? That word means a place of of fire. What is defiling the world is the fire that burns that causes people to lust after money, to lust after immorality. You see, the Bible describes passion as fire. You know, remember when Apostle Paul was saying, young man, if you have found a maiden that your heart desires. Do not delay in taking, her, in taking her as your wife. Why should you burn with passion that leads unto lust and ends in sin and defilement? He says, because I know the passion is burning. The last time you came to introduce her to me, that, oh man of God, I have found the bone of my bones. The man of God said, I could see fire in you, that if the light should go off in this place, he would touch her. Paul says, I see, I see the passion. Let's not pretend. Just go and marry. Because that passion, Paul says, it is like fire. Solomon says, have you seen a man who can put fire in his bosom and not get burned? I'm not talking about the trickery of Vegas. You try, don't try it at home. I'm just saying. You try to put a flame in your clothing and say, it's, okay, it's nothing. It is nothing. Oh, it is nothing. Nobody does that because it burns. And so the world has ended where it's at because of the fire of different kinds of immoral desires. People just lost for money so much so that they lose their humanity. People will sell you fake drugs just so that they can go to the bank smiling. Even though they know it's going to hurt you. People will lie to your face to get your votes so that they can get into Congress and become a lobbyist that lines their pockets with money. You know what kinds of unscrupulous things people do for money? It is because of the 
holy passions that burn. Let me tell you something, folks. We are not immune to those things in our very Adamic selves because the Adamic nature is a fallen nature that runs mostly on animal instinct that responds to the fire of Tobit. And in order for you not to be defiled, you need the life of Christ that does not burn with such passions. Jesus says, my meat is to do my Father's will. That which is born of God does not sin. If you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So why can't you see all of the many privileges that are in the life of Christ and embrace it very quickly? As we break bread today, I want you to tap in and press in to the life of Christ and say that I am not living here with the same vile passions that continue to weigh me down. I am lightening the load by picking up his burden. Jesus says, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. What is his burden? His body. What is his yoke? His bones. He says, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. And once you have the body and the bones, you have the body of the resurrected Jesus. So today, walk in the liberty wherein you have been set free to live victorious. Eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood in remembrance of him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Alrighty, so as soon as we're done breaking bread, I want us to just take a glance at Revelation chapter 4, verse 6. We're just going to take a glance at that, and then we're going to be heading out. I want us to finish service today before Tia has to go. Can we make a target like that? Where's God? Revelation chapter 4, verse 6. So at least I give Kayla a break today. Kayla, she rejoiced in the Lord when I called somebody else's name. Oh, finally, I got a break from this. Oh, it's because of me that we're finishing early. It's Tia's turn today. How good is that? She's even drinking to that. Isn't that awesome? Now, I'm talking about Kayla. She's drinking to that. Revelation chapter 4 verse 6. I want us to just take a glance at it and let something start in your spirit. It says, before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. They were full of eyes where? In front and in back. These are the creatures that are closest to the throne of God. And they have eyes all around. <laughs> because they cannot afford to miss a thing. The glory of God is so dynamic. It's so spontaneous. If you are around his throne, you better have eyes all around. I do not want to be that creature that is in the presence of God that has been told what is going on because I missed it. The Lord is saying, I want you to open your eyes. I'm doing a new thing on the earth. And you need vigilance like never before. You need to be like the four living creatures. You need to allow your body to be full of eyes. So that you can see all of what is going on. God is doing great and mighty things upon the earth. The invitation to sit around the table includes being functional around that table. You don't want to sit around that table and look like you just arrived. And the saints are having a conversation with the Lord of Spirits. And you're like, oh, what do you do? Uh, uh, uh. No, you want to be one of those people who is fully conscious and aware of where you are at. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that the, crystal, that the sea that is around the throne of God is crystal clear. So you're not just seeing what is above. 
you are also supposed to be seeing what is beneath. God does not want anything hidden from you. You know what that sea represents? It represents the wisdom of God. And the Bible says it is very deep and yet the Lord has made it so clear so that you can see. God is inviting you to come up higher, to know the thoughts of his heart and not be oblivious to the plans of the enemy either. The Bible says God forbids that we are ignorant of the devices of the crafty. How will you know if you do not behold? So that's why I'm telling you, Revelations 4, 6, just take a glance. Because if you take a full look right now, we will not be able to close this service. If you take a full look, you will begin to see things. Welcome to the age of Revelation. We have come to the apocalypse full swing. Praise the Lord. Let's give Jesus a big hand of praise. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God bless you, folks. I'll see you on Saturday. Alan is going to come up to take the offering and close out the service. God bless you. I wouldn't normally do anything like this. It's not really my place, but um, I had to say something. Um, I was thinking about the testimonies and how powerful the testimonies were, but it made me think deeper. Don't take these testimonies like somebody's just winning and you're not winning. Don't take these testimonies like um, there's something that they got going on. We're in the revelation time. And just like the enemy is raising up his people, God is raising up his people. And when we have these testimonies, when Z's talking about these tests, why is that important? She's talking about having a client overseas. Why is that important? Why should that be important? She believed that she can get to a certain place because God told her she can get to a certain place. So she had the faith and the courage to take the test and then take the next test and the next test because she got the test and she could have waited. Most of us to take a test. We'll wait two or three years, get that little certification, take another test three years later. She said, no, I can have it right now. I, he done show me. Now, once God show you, it's our part. We got to do it. We got to take the steps. And then when he show you, he'll show you, he'll touch you, and you say, dang, I think I can. Then he'll touch you, and you're like, oh, I might be able to. And then he touch you again, and when he really touch you, when you really take that test and pass, when you really get that thing that you believed in, it shock you for a minute, but you realize he's doing it for a reason. This is just the beginning. That's the marriage, because he wants to, us to have exceeding abundance beyond all kind of life. He want us to win because if we win, we're going to do good in the world. And we need more people that's going to do good in the world. That's why he got all of us here. So I just wanted to say that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate our dear brother Antoine. How many know the Lord is off the chain? Come on, somebody. The giving details are on the screen. We'll just have one scripture here. Hallelujah. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11. Hallelujah, as we give tonight, as we give in obedience, the scriptures declare, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. As we're given tonight, and if you need an envelope, feel free to come forward and grab that for me. As uh, the testimonies have come, so prevalent. They've been back to back, even as our dear brother Antoine was sharing with us. And how 
if we look at the timeline of this season, uh, I would say one of the highlights is that the woman of God had been leading us in pleading the blood of Jesus, okay, over our children. And we know that we, too, are children of God. So I just, I just want to uh, help us in this because uh, the Lord has been dealing with me on assessing the order of things come, uh, to come and what we have been dealing in. We enter the season of pleading the blood of Jesus. And how many realize that shortly after that, so many testimonies have been coming forth. And the scriptures say, and they did not love their lives unto death. What did the man of God just minister to us tonight? Putting our flesh under. These are the keys to overcoming Satan. And the Lord has been so tactful, so just in depth on how he has been schooling us in this. So I want us to draw everything we can from what the Lord has presented to our benefit. Again, the given details are on the screen. Dollar sign Communion House at Cash App at Communion House at PayPal. Let us give in obedience. And let us remember as we're giving these offerings, hallelujah, praise God. As we're giving these offerings, as we were encouraged early on to say what we want to see. Father, we give you praise for you give seed to the sower. There's none like you, O oh God. You have kept us up until this time and you continue to keep us for you have reminded us this evening that the good work that you began, O oh God, you bring to completion in our lives, O oh God. Lord, let these offerings, let our lives, O oh God, be sweet smelling unto you. Let these actions of giving and obedience to this house that you have set before us, the eldership here, O oh God, Lord, let us be renewed even in our giving. Let us be renewed, O oh God, in doing the good works of you, knowing that only good works can come by the leading of your Holy Spirit. We declare that all glory and honor and power and might belong to you. And we all say, amen. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord. Come on, somebody. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, somebody. We give God praise. Y'all know it's a new day. It's 850. Come on, somebody. Ain't even nine o'clock. So let's take this time to go be a blessing and do what we got to do in the Lord. Everyone have a blessed night. We'll see y'all next week.